Today is Veterans Day, and what I'd like to do is I'd like to thank every veteran that are crippled, no longer with us, and some that have survived and still with us. The greatest generation, World War II. I happen to have had the fortune or maybe unfortunate to some of you guys, back in my time, there was not a voluntary. You were, you were drafted. That was it, the draft system was in. And it's something I'm very happy about and wish they'd reinstituted. Maybe a lot of you don't like that idea, but I think it's very, very good. I think each one of us should serve and really feel what it's like to contribute toward the freedom that we have. Um, my number was number 38. If you were under 100, your chances of going in were very good. During that time, it was the Vietnam War. I uh, was starting, and uh, I uh, chose and talked to my mom and chose the Navy, uh, figuring what the hell, if I had a shot, maybe I'd be out on a ship. But was my choice. Anyway, I was at boot camp. I went for regular boot camp 11 weeks. Uh, during that period, I guess I had injured my knee. I didn't think it was bad. It got progressively worse. By the end of boot camp, I was given a final exit examination and uh, told that I was unfit to serve. Keep in mind, I had gone through 11 weeks of rigorous training. Um, Got all my shots, was ready to go. We used to get shots those days with an air gun, shoot it in one arm 11 and turn around and shoot you in the 11, on the other arm 11 more. And you were in a line, that's the way it went. So anyway, I was all set to go and, and a doctor called me in and I told me that I was gonna be discharged. It kind of bothered me. Nothing I could do, I couldn't serve. I had a MCL, IC, uh, ACL in my right knee, uh, which has been bothering me ever since, been operated on. But that's really not the story. The story is that I did enlist. I did want to go, and I did want to serve my country. Fortunes behold, uh, it was not meant for me to do. Um, I still went to two weeks of training uh, every summer, and I went uh, every week to uh, reserve training uh, in our area. Was it good? It was all that I could do. Felt bad for some of them. I lost quite a few dear friends. But that's not the heart of my story. The heart of my story is to inform you that there is a guy who is my uncle, who was my uncle, I should say. His name is John, John Amadeo. Lived in Hudson Valley, Marlboro, New York. He joined the army. His parents came to this country. Because of that, he was a citizen. He enlisted at 17 years old, where he should have been 18. He enlisted in Special Forces, 82nd Airborne. He was quite the guy, very modest. My hero, John. John went off, fought Rommel in Africa, came down from Africa, fought Nanzio, Palermo, worked his way out of Italy into the Battle of the Bulge. I don't have to tell you about the Battle of the Bulge. Um, he made 14 combat jumps. That means that under enemy fire, he was jumping out of planes. Um, some of his friends, he could look over and see that they were either dead or badly wounded by enemy fire. And uh, John luckily made it through. During the course of his campaigns, he was very, very courageous, saved a lot of lives, retired a staff sergeant, 1945, 
earned himself three bronze stars, oak leaf clusters. I can go on and on and on with the decorations he had. He was quite the guy, very, very modest. In 1945, after he ended the war, he opened a modest gas station, Sunoco. Sunoco Oil Company. That still exists today. By the way, for those of you who wouldn't know, it is today in Sunoco Magazine, the oldest privately held gas station in the United States of America. It's almost 80 years old. John worked 14 hours a day, seven days a week. His brother Tommy was there helping out and working with him and so on. I would go at times to get parts that he needed. and I would go there a lot. He was just, and I would ask him stories. When he got out, he'd come to the house and my aunt, my wife's, my mother's younger sister would say, what are you doing? She'd say, don't ask him questions. It's still very fresh for him. You know, 1950, 52, I was what, nine, 10, 11, 12 years old. And I'm interested. And he'd tell me, but tell me very hesitantly, he didn't really want to talk about it. But the one that stands out in my mind is when they liberated Auschwitz, one of the concentration camps. There were many, there were hundreds in Dachau, Auschwitz were some of the ones, Treblinka, that stand out more. Auschwitz was a big one, had a lot of ovens. They liberated the 82nd Airborne, and when they opened the gates to it, he said, I'll never forget, he was going in with the uh, with his troop, and there was a German that had stuck a hose in a prisoner's mouth, filled with water, pumping water into him, then jumped on his stomach. I don't have to tell you what happened after he jumped on his stomach. Everything spewed out. That image stayed with John. John probably had, in those days, you didn't talk about it, PTS, post-traumatic stress. It's not a disorder, post-traumatic stress. Quiet, quiet, simple guy, very respected. But I don't know exactly, maybe 10, 15 years after he got a little bit of money, he put up a flag, and not just a flag. It cost him thousands of dollars, he had it erected. Right off the back of the gas station, like, Every morning at six o'clock, whatever sunup was, he'd raise a flag. And every night, he'd lower it. A true, true patriot. I had a massive amount of respect for him, as many people did. John worked his seven hour days. Flag is still there. I guess his son and son-in-law, who he left the gas station to, they raised it and lowered it in his honor. He was a quiet guy, but along the way, he made a lot of money. Nobody knew it, but he made enough to where probably he bought half the town he owned bought most of the buildings and he was the landlord for and my cousins will tell me today the ones I speak to is he had two sons and a daughter that they collect the rents and stuff probably a quiet multi-millionaire who you'd never know lived in a modest home with my aunt Fanny I used to call her till she died every week she said you're the only one that calls me I said, I call you because I love you and I call you in honor of your, your husband. Again, I say over and over, he was my hero. Second generation. He fought and died for us. Beaches in Normandy, the Pacific Theater. My wife Nina's father served under MacArthur. He was, when he died, laid to rest 
And I could never forget that at the funeral were various generals and men that were still alive that had come. Because John was so patriotic, every year he would get together with the ones that were remaining and they would meet in various parts of the world and all that and have like a, a weekly reunion every year. He truly was a patriot. I know his mom and dad, his sister, brother. Very, very close, very, very quiet. The car that he drove was not new. But believe me when I tell you, my wife and I went to an affair, Pier 9, it was a black tie function, and I happened to be sitting at a table with a lawyer. And I don't know how it came up, but he said to me, uh, do you know the uh, Amadeus? And I said, yeah, I do. And I said, matter of fact, uh, my mother's sister, the youngest one, is married to John. He said, you know, I'm doing John's will. He said, I've been working on it for six months. That's what he had amassed quietly, no pretension, never knew it. But you knew it near the end, the last 20, 25 years, where he'd take trips, and John liked to gamble. Didn't gamble at all during the year, didn't gamble at all, but when he went on that vacation for a week or two with my aunt, he'd go to Monte Carlo. And he could lose fifty, a hundred thousand dollars, and or win it, go to Vegas. That was his. That was his good time. He enjoyed it. He worked for it. Why am I going through this nitty gritty and telling you all about him or whatever? He happens to be one that I know very, 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 very closely and very endearingly. He was my uncle. He was a patriot. He served the country special forces, enlisted a year younger than he should have, and fought for our country. And some of you guys are out there burning flags and this and that. The second generation, whatever, they fought for us. They fought for all the freedoms that we have. I know I tried. And I'm very proud that if nothing else, I didn't escape to Canada as many individuals did. I went in Great Lakes. Unfortunately, it wasn't meant to be. But I did. But John, is really the hero. He not only did, he saw the action from Africa to the bulge. Four years, solid fighting in the trenches. Never gave up. Came out a hero. Didn't want any of it. Didn't talk about it, nothing. But everybody in the town knew. John Amadeo was a quiet hero, my hero. That's why I'm telling you this story today, to let you guys out there know that it means something, Veterans Day. It should mean something to each and every one of us, that we have the privilege, the honor, and all the freedoms because of him because of them that fought for us. I just want to thank you, Uncle John, for your service. May you rest in peace. Happy Veterans Day. Thank you for listening.